topic 6.1, DNA and RNA structure. Here are some of the questions that we'll be addressing. Describe the structure and function of DNA and RNA. Compare and contrast how prokaryotic and eukaryotic DNA is organized. What is a plasmid? I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com, where we believe that interaction and feedback is what leads to deep, substantial learning. We're so sure of that, that we provide a money-back guarantee that comes with your subscription. Describe the structure of DNA. DNA is a double-stranded helical molecule composed of nucleotide monomers. In this flattened out representation of DNA, here's one strand, here's the other strand. In this helical representation, you can see one strand, another strand, because there's two strands, it's a double helix. The monomers are nucleotides. They consist of a five carbon sugar called deoxyribose, hence deoxyribonucleic acid, a phosphate group, and one of four nitrogenous bases. So it doesn't have to have this exact structure, it can vary over here in terms of the nitrogenous base. Each strand consists of covalently bonded deoxyribose sugars and phosphate groups, which comprise DNA's sugar phosphate backbone. Within the helix, bases with complementary shapes bind through hydrogen bonds. Thymine is complementary to adenine. Guanine is complementary to cytosine. In the case of adenine and thymine, you can see the hydrogen bonds that form between the oxygen over here, the hydrogen over here, hydrogen over here, nitrogen over here. The bonding follows base pairing rules that you have to commit to memory. Adenine binds only with thymine, A binds with T. Guanine binds only with cytosine, G binds with C. For the nucleotides to bind, they have to be oriented upside down relative to one another, making the two strands anti-parallel. This strand has its five prime end over here, its three prime end down here, and this strand is the opposite, anti-parallel, like this. Explain how DNA's structure allows it to serve as the molecule of heredity. We'll start with information storage. The four bases can occur in any order. I've represented them over here as A, C, T, G over and over again to show the structure, but there could be three A's in a row, followed by two C's, followed by a T, followed by whatever. The sequence isn't determined by DNA's chemistry. That allows the sequence to be an informational code that specifies sequences of RNA and protein. Replicability. The specific base pairing, A, T, G, C, that we talked about previously, allows each strand to serve as a template for the synthesis of a complementary strand during DNA replication, which we'll talk about in a moment. That also ensures high fidelity transmission of genetic information from parent cells to daughter cells. DNA is highly stable. Its double helical structure protects the sequence of bases that are inside. But while it's stable, it's also capable of mutation. Mutability is the fourth characteristic. There's a low level of mutation where bases can change from one to another, either spontaneously or caused by mutation causing factors in the environment. And that allows for change in this code, which allows for evolution. Compare and contrast the functions of DNA and RNA. DNA is the molecule of heredity in all organisms. Anything that is cell-based life, which is all life, has DNA as its molecule of heredity, as the stuff that genes are made of. RNA is the hereditary molecule in some, but not all, viruses. Viruses that you might know about that are RNA-based include HIV and SARS, a form of which just caused the COVID-19 pandemic. In all organisms, RNA is involved in information transfer related to protein synthesis, how DNA becomes RNA and how RNA becomes proteins. And that includes forms of RNA such as mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA. In eukaryotes, RNA is also involved in the regulation of gene expression. And this previews some topics that we'll talk about later in this unit. That includes splicing out introns non-coding DNA from pre-mRNA to create mRNA, and regulating protein synthesis. 
Is AP Bio making you feel overwhelmed and inadequate? That's completely reasonable. At learn-biology.com, we understand why students struggle with AP Bio. The material is complex, the pace is brutal, and the vocabulary is ridiculous. But at learn-biology.com, we've created a way that makes it easier for you to study. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a four or a five on the AP Bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. Compare and contrast how genetic information is stored in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes store their DNA in looped circular chromosomes. In other words, the beginning and the end is connected. It's sometimes described as circular, but looped is really more accurate. The genomes of bacteria and archaea range from about 100,000 base pairs to 10 million base pairs. And their DNA is naked. It's not wrapped around a protein scaffold. In eukaryotes, the DNA is organized into multiple linear chromosomes. So there's one end and there's another end. And the DNA is wrapped around these proteins that are called histones. Eukaryotic genomes are much larger than prokaryotic genomes. The human genome, as one example, consists of 3.2 billion base pairs, but there are some plant genomes that consist of 150 billion base pairs. What are plasmids? What's their function? How are they used in genetic engineering? Plasmids are small, extra chromosomal loops of DNA, commonly found in bacteria, less commonly in archaea, rarely in eukaryotes. Here's the main bacterial chromosome. These loops, also made of DNA, are the plasmids. They're involved in horizontal gene transfer between bacterial cells through a process called conjugation. These transfer genes, because they're transferring DNA, that codes for protein, from one cell to another, they're often for antibiotic resistance. Plasmids are commonly used in genetic engineering as a vector for replicating DNA and for expressing engineered genes within bacterial cells. Both horizontal gene transfer and genetic engineering are going to be covered later in Unit 6. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success, learn-biology.com, and watch this next video.